know, we're outside. We could lower our masks if you want. Usually on work trips, I end up back in the hotel just talking to my mother. But I guess today you're my mom. <laughs> Uh, so this is Pramit from uh, High on Films and it is really nice to meet you too. Uh, first of all, congratulations on winning your best, best first feature award at the Film Independent Awards. I was like seeing all your baffled reactions and it was really super fun to see. That's so <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, so, Where are so you? I am are in you? India, in Siliguri, West Bengal. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah we're um, parents from New Delhi. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, yeah, but we're in New York. But yeah, I was just wondering. I felt like we were in India, so just wanted to. <laughs> so, so what was the post uh, celebration like? Like, well, where were you, where were you uh, celebrating with Daisy Spider Man blasting uh, at Volume Eleven? Uh, blast Daisy Spider Man. Though, that's yeah, a really good that's idea. A really good idea. Um, no, we just went to. The, it was an after party for the IFC, the channel that hosted it, and we just went there. We were just in shock. Just all of it was in shock. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And we're a couple, and we hadn't seen each other for so long. It had been like five or six weeks. So that was our first day back together after for a long distance and separation. So it was really nice to be together for that day. Yeah. So so my first, and it is a bit uh, complicated question as well. So uh, so like you have uh, spoken in length about how uh, Seven Days has brought a new perspective into the Hollywood rom-com genre because arranged marriages isn't very common in this genre. But uh, watching it as an Indian in India is a little different because, and, and, and I find it interesting because you uh, focus on the human elements, like the flaws that uh, Rita and Ravi have, and uh, reduce the parents' influence, like the topic of caste and religion, to a minimum, like which is almost mm -hmm. the opposite of, opposite of what happens in arranged marriages in India. So, mm -hmm. how much was it of, was a, a conscious decision, and like how much was it naturally uh, to came to you because of your yeah. Indian culture? Well, I think it's just different in North America, where the parents are less concerned, I think, with caste and religion even um, than they are here. You know, I think many Indian parents, I, I know my mom, for example, really wanted my brother to marry someone who was also Punjabi, but like because we're Punjabi. And then she very quickly let go of that. And now it's like any Indian from any part of India, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in North America, I don't think you can uh, afford to be as picky. Yeah, there's less options. And, yeah. and so I, this whole world was so interesting for me because I grew up in India and we don't have websites really, or when I grew up, like where this was happening. And through him and many family members, he's known on Shadi.com who have met people it was such an interesting world where it was like they were trying to find certain traditional values, but we're having a hard time because, you know, people have evolved and changed. And, and so like, his like with his mom, like eventually they start with this very strict list and very quickly they're like, is she living, breathing and doesn't have debt? Okay, yeah. great. Like, we'll just make it work. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. just so different over here. So what we depicted is I think a pretty accurate version of how arranged marriage or introduced marriage, which is probably the more accurate term mm -hmm. plays out in North America. <laughs> Indians, uh, people of Indian descent. Right, right. This was this was shot during the pandemic, and during the same time, like we were getting shows like uh, Indian Matchmaking and The Big Day, which was all about arranged marriages, and that kind of brought a new sense of skepticism around arranged marriages. So, but there are people like Ravi who depend on arranged marriages to have a partner. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so do you think Seven Days is like a beacon of hope for like younger generations? were still skeptical, but they need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do think there are some people who need it. But I do think in general that it's meant to show uh, it's a perfectly valid way to find a partner mm -hmm. and genuine companionship. And it's meant to offer up a different perspective for most Western rom-coms. The perspective being that love is also something that is practically built between two people and then maintained through caring and its own form of love for the rest of their relationship and the rest of their life, which is something I think we innately know growing up the way that we all did, um, but is a little bit further actually from the Western experience. We've had so many friends who are not Indian watch the movie and they were like, honestly, this doesn't look so bad to me because they're so sick and tired of the dating apps. They were like, I would love if someone was like, here's this person and like, just try to figure it out with them. Like people say that all the time now. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. And uh, like something that that's missing again from a completely Indian perspective, like something that is missing from arranged marriages is this period of period of time where 
people who want to get married they don't know how each of the partners are in their personal spaces like you get to see how they are in their personal spaces when they are not seeing each other so until like a few drops of whiskey go in and everything comes out yeah. <laughs> and so you really push rita and ravi to look beyond these bound binaries that society has imposed so what was the decision making process behind that particular theme i think it's a big part of what we've been going through with covid too where like you we had all these expectations of like paths of where our life was going and then suddenly we were forced to be like okay in many ways isolating with other roommates or friends or partners and suddenly being like oh my relationship worked when we went to an office from 9 to 5 but now that our office is in the living room we can't stand each other or whatever all this stuff so it was we were in that period very heavily when we wrote the script and so it sort of naturally felt like exploring that would feel interesting and good and it also just uh, creatively just lent for a lot of comedy and drama and all the good things and we were working with very uh, limited you know um circumstances with covid and like how many actors we could have with the testing and all that so it all sort of naturally fit into the story i think are you seeing this We I think we moved in while we were making the movie. Mm-hmm. Right because we had just moved in. Yeah. Over the summer. So it was on our mind. Yeah. Uh, so like did your personal experience also bleed into the script? Yeah, I think they were playing of their Karen is playing a version of himself and Rita is a version of me. <laughs> um in terms of their relationship and ours, but mm-hmm. it's changed because I was much more um hard-hearted at the beginning but have grown really tender um and I'm now probably the more tender one. So we switched roles. a little bit from the way the movie depicts it. And you so. stopped making paintings about vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that. I never did that. I don't think but that was a real but, plot twist. Yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was it really twist. was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um Karen's sister painted all of the real paintings. And and was the ending always supposed to be ambiguous or was there a version where like they were going to get some form of closure or the I mean the audience was going to get a form of closure with the relationship. Yeah, I mean for me I just feel like the the strict narrative rule is you never show audience as something they already know is going to happen and mm-hmm. or can already imagine because it's always going to be worse than what um that what you depict is always going to be worse than what exists in people's head and all fiction has to leave a little bit of space for people's imagination. I think once they see each other, once they lower their masks, once they stand in proximity of each other, that's all you need to know about the rest of their lives. because they they're about to share and they are sharing something sweet and magical but why ruin it with something so crass as a kiss that's not what love is like love it's not something you grow like a plant you can't just go from being complete strangers to living together but before that uh, uh, final moment like one of the freeing uh, more scenes in the movie is the whole dance sequence so mm. until that moment like everybody is really wound up they are very awkward but and even the cinematography is kind of playing with the restrictions of the lighting in that film but in that scene you kind of do away with all those restrictions and you do unmotivated lighting and all that so mm. was it as liberating to direct and act in that scene as it was Uh, for us as as freeing as it was well karen was drunk uh so i think it was quite liberating and then <laughs> we were playing yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually and then we were playing bollywood music um like our favorites yeah. from his play because we both are big lovers of bollywood music and we didn't that song desi swaderman did not exist at that point mm-hmm. it was meant to be shila ki jivani but we couldn't convince t series to give us the rights because what they asked for in terms of licensing was the budget of the movie <laughs> so we um we, but we, anyways they danced to a playlist of bollywood music that i was actually pressing advance on as we were going through it because i was the only other indian person there who could do that and then um yeah we did un- unmotivated lighting as you discussed it's quite wild um and i wondered at the time will this feel like too much of a departure from reality when this is quite a grounded movie because the lights are not just uh changing in brightness as they go through the song they're changing color mm-hmm. they're moving in sequence and um but it all feels perfectly like being drunk to me anyways to being like being drunk and dancing um so it ended up working out i think yeah i think we just did one take too yeah oh like yeah we just shot them dancing for four yeah. minutes with a handheld camera we went through one and a half songs right right and, and one other the, and this this is kind of because i'm a little politically active you can say so the pots banging uh, scene like i was absolutely 
laughing because of that scene so like how did it come into the script how did you uh, bring that into the uh, movie well i think that was happening in america that they were trying to that people were trying to reward the and applaud the efforts of doctors by banging pots out the windows um so it just seemed like his character would be a part of that just yeah. because of who he was and is yeah he's taking it all very seriously and sincerely and um it also i think also encapsulates like where we are time wise in the pandemic obviously it's gone on and on and, on. and no one is doing that anymore but it in a way like it's like the like how we all were in that period of time trying to be like how long is this what are we doing trying to find some purpose and meaning like trying to feel helpful and it all sort of worked with all that and and was great for highlighting the characters because his character is doing it and hers is like literally walking out the door being mm-hmm. like I'm used to do this and it just shows like where they're at like mentally uh, at that stage in the story and you were talking about bollywood so i am a shahrukh khan fan and seeing somebody mm-hmm. narrate uh, kal hona who was so enthusiastically was just com- <laughs> yeah. absolutely I, know, i hope it like shows up on his radar or <laughs> for anyone yeah. i'll, I'll make sure i'll try <laughs> Blasting it on Twitter. <laughs> so, so like, what are some of the most uh, mandatory viewing for all Bollywood movies, according to you both? Well, my favorite is like because you know I left India in twenty two thousand seven, so I've reduced watching as many Bollywood movies just because they weren't available as easily. But um, so for me, like, I grew up on K three G, Kal Hona Ho. um dilta bagle dilta bagle all these movies come so, up kick on yeah movies that i feel like they're not making that kind anymore cuz now to me at least on the outside it seems like it's a lot of action mm-hmm. movies mm-hmm. that yeah. uh, is not my favorite gully boy thing. has been good gully um boy, in the recent good. years gully boy is a stand out i think and then we love uh, made in heaven which i know is not a movie but um, dave das is really good anything zoya akhtar does i think is really good but yeah. and anything ali abad does is really good we're like huge fans of ali abad So you have checked out Gangu Bai like is that Oh okay. we just watched the trailer last night we're really excited to watch that movie yeah. because it looks just intense and beautiful. classic Sanjay Leela yeah Yeah it's yeah. classic Sanjay Leela it's like nobody can do that even in the west like there's nobody is doing mm-hmm. what he does visually I think it's so um it's just so amazing We did so, I watch Raya I watched that and then I watched the Fame game Yeah on netflix yeah our friend uh, created it so yeah so so now that you have brought kind of the arranged marriage genre into the hollywood rom-com genre like is there any other uh, stories that you want to tell from the indian perspective that you think needs telling we're going to do a gay indian rom-com next year um where karan will play the lead <laughs> and then i'll direct um again and then uh but yeah but you know yeah we have another like a horror idea too that we would want to shoot in india uh which we're still working on but yeah we have a lot of ideas. and then one day we'd be so lucky to make a bollywood movie oh please God. do please and and i'm very excited that you said horror like my heart just jumped uh, i we need good oh. indian horror movies so yeah, yeah. Uh, so on a parting note i think uh, my time is also up so a parting note that i want to uh, leave with karan uh, is that if i think i will be the 100th person to say this today that do you know that francis ford coppola has said that deadpool is amazing <laughs> yeah i just saw that last <laughs> night or something which i was like wow <laughs> That's great. I'm always like what? I crazy. love when people get to that age because they just <laughs> say the truth the unfiltered uninhibited truth Yeah, yeah that is really cool. we should get francis ford coppola for a dobinder uh, spin off oh we should yes. camp in for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah a story yeah. family betrayal kind of dobinder drop that sounds amazing great yeah, idea really generations great idea. of the pinder yeah 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 the girl locked up in the cab oh my god yeah. all right Yeah so thank you for having me it was a really pleasure and all the best for your theatrical and video on demand run uh, i i hope it gets great, great reviews it has already got what some great reviews i get it hope thank hope you. it gets more love thank you thank you and thank you for staying up so I late know. to do this yes. no 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 i i sleep a lot later than this this is not like any yeah. so. oh my god yeah <laughs> thank you that was a lot of work Moment of truth. Oh my god, that is so good. Mm.